And welcome back to another CBB Talk with your boy, Will Dickinson. What an episode we got for today. First of all, I want to say happy Valentine's Day. I'm wearing red. Okay, I don't know why I want to do this. Okay, I'm happy Valentine's Day. Um, We got an episode to talk about some college basketball Uh, for all the people that are single watching this. Uh, I'll be there with you. Um, I'm there with you. We had some very interesting results. More top 10 teams. Losing to unranked teams happened over the last two days, which has uh, been a common occurrence, and we can look forward to today and tomorrow um, before we get into the weekend um, or the next episode. So let's get into it. Let's start on Monday, where we had Kansas drop another road game. That's three road games in a row for the Jayhawks. They get bl- They get their ass beat pretty heavily. To Texas Tech, fifty to seventy nine. There, Bill Self ends up getting ejected. Um, he was tired of the performance there. No Kevin McCullough, and it showed. I think Kevin McCullough's been the most important best player on this team this year. Um, Texas Tech shot the lights off the ball. I mean, the first twenty some points they had like seven threes. Um, in the they had like eight or nine threes in the first half. Seven threes of the first like nine basket. Seven seven of the first nine baskets were threes. You can't really do much about it. Um, Hunter Dickinson had like five points. Furphy was the leading scorer there. Uh, Williams had, for Texas Tech, didn't miss a shot. Um, is it Demar- Darius Williams or whatever? 30 points, didn't miss a shot from the field. Um, Texas Tech rolls. Good win there in Lubbock for the Red Raiders. Um, and Kansas is continuing to struggle on the road there. Um, I've dropped Kansas down to 10th in the country. It's probably the lowest they've been all season. Um, I don't got Texas Tech ranked, but it's a very good win for the Red Raiders. You ha- they hold home court, um, and they'll be in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Grant McCaslin's done an amazing job um, over there um, in year one at Texas Tech there. Pop Isaacs has been a very good player for the Red Raiders, and they continue to look very good, and uh, they're trending towards an NCAA tournament. Kansas, I'm a little worried. Um, of course, they don't have McCullough, but they've really struggled to play on the road this season, especially in Big 12 play. That's now they have losses to West Virginia. Um, they lost at Iowa State, not too surprising there, and then losing um, at Texas Tech. They got to start finding something on the road there. They can't be Allen Field House dependent because um, we see another team in the Big 12 get a nice road win yesterday that we can get to. Um, and I feel a little bit more confident in that team right now i got kansas now third in the big 12 in my rankings which is um i think that's maybe the first time all year they've been there so not too surprising uh with that result but i did say i thought kansas i thought when i saw kansas underdogs i was a little surprised i guess i kind of forgot mcculler would be out still um and texas tech's 18-6 kansas is 19-6 there so it's not too much of a difference um, but let's get into Tuesday because yesterday was one was one of the best weekday basketball that we've seen um all year, and we had a lot of great games. Let's start out in the Big East where Marquette takes down Butler on the road. Tyler Kulik is cementing himself as the best point guard in college basketball, and looking like he's going for his back to back second in a row Big East Player of the Year. 27 7 and 5. Um, I watched a lot of this game. Uh, it was back and forth. Um, Butler really, um, at times, looked like they were going to win this game. Uh, it was super competitive in that first half there. Uh, but we didn't get the game from Pasha Alexander you want there. Um, and I think Marquette um, has found their identity back. They, they shortened their rotation. And I think it's 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 been very important for them. Um, they gotta stay out of foul trouble. Um, and Iguodaro, they play through him and Kulik. Um, they have a great two man. Um, you know, they go on and off each other. Iguodaro can really pass the ball from the five spot there. Stevie Mitchell's coming in and played great minutes. Um, uh, being that fifth starter, and then Ben Gold is a big that can shoot their ball off the bench. Um, yeah, and then Pierre Books was good in this one, but you don't get the game. Posh Alexander gives you only four points. Bizjack had 19 off the bench there, but you have Davis giving you only seven. Um, and Butler really, um, they didn't shoot terribly, but you you, you got to be a team like Marquette, you're going to have to shoot the ball better. Um, and Marquette, I, they're, they're the real, 
they were they been on now an eight game win streak, and a lot of those wins they were pretty um simple wins at games you're supposed to win. This is a challenging one because I believe Butler can be an NCAA tournament team, um, and this one hurts Butler's chances, but I don't think it um ruins um Marquette. Keep building that. I got Marquette ranked fourth in the country, and they can be a one seed in the NCAA tournament. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at it. Uh, about that at all. Indiana State loses to Illinois State. This drops Illinois. Uh, Indiana State just out of my rankings. Um, is this a quad three? Maybe a quad four loss at home to a two twelve and fourteen team. That's really bad. That lose by thirteen. That really hurts your at large chances because Drake got a nice win yet or a, a close win yesterday. Um, and if you're the MVC, you just can't have that. You want Indiana State to be a very viable, um, at large component team. So if they lose in the MVC championship to Drake, um, you'll be okay with. Uh, the committee could see having two teams in there. This is a bad loss to the Sycamores. You get your ranking first ranking since Larry Bird. Then you give it right back. Um, it's it, it's not a good loss there. I dropped them out. I had to. Um, hopefully, I can pick it up and not do that for the rest of the regular season. The team in the Big Twelve that got the road big road win was Iowa State. They went sixty eight fifty nine against Cincinnati on the road. Um, they forced over twenty. They first twenty five turnovers, allow only fifty nine points. Illinois, I mean, sorry, Iowa State is legit. They're one of the best defenses in the nation. They turned the ball over the best in the nation at doing that, and they're led by Taman Lipsey, um, one of the most underrated players in the country there, Keyshawn Gilbert, Milicic. These are guys who, um, Milanovic, um, sorry, I really don't know how to pronounce the game. I think it's Milan, let me, uh, Milanovic? Is that what? I can't never know how to pronounce his name. Um, Momklivovich. Momklivovich, he only had two in this one. Ronald Jones, the big... Is that his name, Ronald Jones? That's the running back. If it is Ronald Jones... No, Robert Jones. It's definitely Robert. It's definitely Robert. I'm clicking to make sure. Yep, it's Robert. I knew it. Robert Jones, the big 12. He's really um, grown a lot since last year's team. Jones had 15 off the bench there. So they really have... They don't have a complete deep team here, um, but they are a defensive-minded team. Um, that's going to wear you down, and they did that in this one. Um, they made Cincinnati turn the ball over, and they get a road win in the Big 12, and we've seen a lot of teams struggle about doing that, especially um, Kansas. I moved Iowa State up a good amount to number three, or number six in the nation there. Uh, they are trending in a great direction right now, Um and they can continue to get wins. And they win, if they win the Big 12 regular season, it's going to be hard to deny them as a one seed. Um, I want to see them play Houston. I really do. I want them to play Houston again. That should be a great game. I don't know if they play again. Let's see. Does Iowa State play Houston again this regular season? Because I honestly don't know. Let's look at the schedule. Um, so they already they already played Houston, right? They beat Houston at home. Damn it. They don't play Houston again. They finish the regular... Oh, wait, do they? Oh, shit, I wasn't even looking. They do play Houston again. Okay. They play at Houston next Monday? Is this a Monday game? Or is it a Tuesday game? It's a Monday game. Pretty sure this is next Monday is at Houston at 7. It's going to be a good game. It's a real good game. Um, they are, And the, the finishing schedule isn't too bad. I I see maybe two or two losses maybe in the rest of the regular season. Um, that should that would that would be really good for T.J. Osberger. Look, he's done an amazing job there. It's gonna be three straight NCAA tournaments. Um, for the Cyclones, and let's see if they can get um. Back to a Sweet Sixteen. Um, wait, no, did Iowa State not make it? No, Iowa State made it last year. Iowa State made it last year. But um, let's see if they can you know make a run this year like they did back um in the early two thousand tens, uh, with Fred Hoiberg. Virginia, classic Virginia here. Lose a home game to Pitt. They won. They had the longest in the streak of home wins in the nation at twenty three. That gets snapped. Um, they allow seventy points for the second straight game. They got picked that defense up because Virginia is obviously not going to beat you with offense. Good game from Beatman McNeely. It wasn't enough. Blake Hinson shoots the pill off the ball. 
the peel off the ball. Um, and we've seen Pitt now get two road wins against Duke and Virginia this year. And it's because of Blake Henson being able to um, shoot it from anywhere on the court. Um, Pitt is quietly um, building a little resume here. They got off to a bad start in ACC play. I think they're hot right now. I think they're on a five-game win streak or so. Um, Pitt's playing really good. Jeff Capel um, has got this team this, um come together and play really well. Um, a team that made the NCAA tournament last year and won a game. They, maybe they can get there again. They, they got a lot of work to do, um, but they have a chance. They're playing good basketball right now. Obviously, Virginia's got to drop out of my top 25. I'm not too worried about Virginia about making the NCAA tournament, but this is a classic Virginia game. Um, once you get start giving them some praise, they're always going to let you down. Um, besides, of course, 2019 when they won the national championship. And this team is just not that good. Um, I was I didn't think they were going to be a tournament team this year after what we saw earlier in the year. Um, but they they're looking like they're going to get to that level. They're just going to have to play better defense because – um, you can't give up 74 points at home, Virginia. They hadn't done that in a long time. Providence continues to play well. Adoro, 28 in this one. They take down St. John's. Providence is playing very, very good basketball. Um, they are, they're they're kind of doing a win-loss, win-loss thing, um, but you got to win your home games. They, end up go, they do beat St. John's at home in the dunk. Um, not too surprising there. Um, Providence is a really good team. St. John's is just not going to be an NCAA tournament team on the year, year one of Bettino unless they go on some crazy run in the Big East tournament or they turn around their season right now and pretty much win out. Um, Providence trending towards the tournament. It's still – they're going to be on the bubble. Um, but Kim English in year one has done a great job for the Friars. And, um, yeah, I mean, good good home win. They continue to get the job done in the dunk, and then they they've stole road games already this year. Um, so they can maintain um playing well at home, um, and then beat teams they should on the road. Um, they they'll be in the NCAA tournament. Texas A and M is gonna it's just just pretty much ruined your NCAA tournament home. So you got a big win over Tennessee on the weekend, and then you lose against Vanderbilt. It's on the road. It doesn't matter. It's Vanderbilt. That was their second SEC win of the year. Um. You just can't do that. The Aggies really are um, a bipolar team. And a good game winner from Vanderbilt. It almost looked like a travel. I don't think it was, but if you watch in real time, it did look like a travel, that game winner. But shout out to Vanderbilt for getting a win. They're 8-17, their ass. Um, but a win is a win. Um, and Texas A&M, that really hurts your chances of being in the NCAA tournament. A team that was in my top 15 preseason. UNC continues to struggle, and their defenses came back to earth. Syracuse gets a home win over a top-10 team for the first time, um, I believe, since, like, 2018 or something, a while. Um, they get it over UNC, 86-78. Judah Mintz and J.J. Starling combined for, I think it was 46 points, um, and dominate that second half against Carolina to get a really good win. Um, Carolina's defense... When they were ranked, um, I think I had them as high as three in the na- third in the nation. Um, they were twelfth best defense in the nation. They're now over their last five games, where they're two and three. They're over. They're a hundredth and like fifteenth. So they regressed on defense. Um, Baycott's been better. He didn't have a great game in this one. Um, RJ had some good shots. Cadeau was just just wasn't himself in that game. Um and and again their defense uh they've they've got um exposed in these last couple games against Miami kept Miami they lost the Miami game but Miami still played really well of course Georgia Tech did um Clemson exposed them and now Syracuse so um UNC's got to clean things up they're not playing great basketball right now and now Duke's tied with them in the ACC. Um, and we're going to have that match at the end of the regular season. That could be the determining factor in who wins the SEC or the ACC. Um, I'm not too worried about Carolina. Look, they're going to be in the NCAA tournament. I move Carolina down the eighth in the nation, so I still think Carolina's a very good team. Um, but I think Syracuse, look, I think Syracuse, you know, if somehow they're just going to have to start keep winning these type of games, they could make a run. I think they're a dangerous team come the ACC tournament because of Judah Mintz. He's a real star in this, um, when he came, as he came back as a sophomore. Um, so shout out to Syracuse and 
first uh, for Coach Aubrey, first big or Aldry, first big win of his career. So shout out to Syracuse and a good win for them. Crane continues to dominate a triple double from Baylor Shime, and in this one, I move Crane back into my top twenty five at twenty four. Um. Colorado State in uh, San Diego State was interesting. Colorado State dominates the first half. They're up 14 going into the half. Um, and then in the second half, they scored 11 points. I've never seen anything like Jalen Ladee doubled Colorado State's points in the second half alone. He had five going into the break, ends with 27. He was dominant. San Diego State's defense was stifling. Um it was just a wild result. Colorado State couldn't get anything. They could not make a three. Um, we couldn't really even finish around the rim there. And the Aztecs get a good win. Um, I think Colorado State was probably ranked above them. I don't think they they wouldn't be anymore. You can't score eleven to forty one. They got they got outscored by thirty in the second half to end up losing by sixteen points. Just a tale of two halves there. Good one for the uh, for the Aztecs. You're just out of my top 25. Uh, but Jalen Ledee, it's good to see him get on track. And, and the the Aztecs will need him to um, if they want to be um, a high seed in March. And uh, if they're going to go on the run, they're going to need um, Jalen Ledee to be that guy um, like he was in the beginning of the season. Kentucky gets back on track with a win. Um, Antonio Reeves, 15. Good team effort. Dillingham, I believe, had 10. Uh, Reed Shepard had a good game. Um, it's it's just Kentucky, you know, need to get back another home win again. Um, Agneso had ten blocks, which is that's crazy. He needs to be more of a presence. He's been getting way more minutes there. Um, I think we have what we see. Big Z got no minutes in this one, so they're figuring out their big minutes. They got depth. They play nine man, nine people in this game, which I think is good for Kentucky. The hero comes back onto the bench there. Justin Edwards played better, which is good to see. Um, I don't know why you start DJ Wagner over Rob Dillingham or Reed Shepard. I don't understand starting DJ over Reed at all. Like I honestly don't know why Cal Parry's doing that. But whatever, you gotta win. Ole Miss, there are three games. They're in a three game spill right now. Um. They're just. I don't think they'll go dancing this year. A good year, you know, one on the Chris Beard, and I'll see. I think they'll be in the NIT. Um, but they just don't. I they they've already exceeded expectations. I just don't think they'll be in the NCAA tournament. They just don't have good enough computer numbers or wins really to be there. Wisconsin beats Ohio State. Not really a big result, but it did result in Chris Holtman being fired from Ohio State. Um, made what I think six tournaments. As time in Ohio State, or maybe was it six seasons and three tournaments? I can't remember. Um, but he never made it past the first weekend. Of course, they were a two seed in 2021, ended up uh losing to Oral Roberts in that first round. Um, having a un uh very disappointing season this year, and he's been fired. And we'll see who Ohio State's next coach is. Um, but I wish him the best and the program of Ohio State the best because uh, it's better. Basketball, college basketball better when Ohio State's better. But good one for Wisconsin to get back on track. They were on a four-game losing streak before that game. Baylor beat Oklahoma. Um, nothing too surprising there. Jaden Nunn had, what, 27? 27 for Jaden Nunn. He's been playing really good ball recently. Can He's one of the best shooters in the country there. Evie's Misi has been good. Ray J. Dennis, the point guard. Um, again, this is why I've been questionable in Oklahoma all year. Um, I just don't know how good they are. Soares had a 17 points there. I just don't think they have a guy. Um, I don't know if Iowa State has a guy, but Iowa State's so good defensively that I don't think they need a guy, at least in the regular season. I think in the tournament, maybe that could be a little reason I'm skeptical of them because I don't know if they have that go-to guy um, in a close game. Maybe it's Kayshawn Gilbert, but I don't know if Oklahoma has that either. And maybe Baylor's found a guy in Jane Dunn, 27 in this one. Um, he missed the game winner against Kansas, or the game tire, Um and who knows if he makes that if Baylor goes and wins that game. But um, Baylor, good win, expected. That's why I didn't move Baylor down after that loss to Kansas because I know they're a good team. BYU holds only against UCF there. Could have been a big win to UCF. Maybe uh, would have got some conversations stirring. But good win for the um, for the Cougars. Good w- a home win. Jackson Robinson at 21 off the bench in in uh, in a dub. Uh, 
it's a weird conference matchup. You should see F BYU, but it's a conference matchup nonetheless. And then the last good result late night, New Mexico, after losing a home game to UNLV over the weekend, bounces back and gets a road win at Nevada. Um, six beat six bin Mountain West. Could it be a real thing? This is the twentieth win for New Mexico. Uh, Rich Pitino's team, huge win. They're up ten at half, came close. Jamal Mashburn hits a big three. Um to really seal the deal at the end of the game, uh, to give Nevada, uh, sorry, to give New Mexico a lead. Nevada couldn't, uh, just couldn't get the job done at home. They've been playing good recently. I actually had Nevada ranked. I moved them out. I think that resulted in Kentucky getting back in and Clemson being back in. One of those teams was in because of that loss. Um, really good win for the, for the Lobos. I'm big on the Lobos, Lobos this year. I might be that. I think the Lobos could be the team out of the Mountain West I have going the furthest in the tournament. Of course, it's going to depend on what draw they get. Um, but, of course, the Mountain West tournament is just going to be a huge, like, that tournament's going to be so good because we have six real teams, and two of those teams will be right on that bubble. I believe one, at least one of those teams will play in the first four. Um, so th that's going to be very interesting. But shout out to um, New Mexico getting a road win at Nevada. Um, not too worried about Nevada, uh, but a big win for New Mexico. Um, after you losing a home game to UNLV, you just can't do that. But they bounce back in a necessary way. So let's look at the next two days before we get out of here. This is not a long episode, but everything is going to be talked about. Uh, Michigan State, Penn State, just don't lose that. Penn State, Michigan State, just don't do that. Um, Miami, Clemson's interesting. Clemson, I'm, you're back in my rankings. Um, let's see if you can get a nice win there, Miami. I mean, Miami's not good. I, I guess I got, I think, one. I think Matthew Cleveland under on that one. Um, Watch out. I don't know. Uh, Xavier, Seen Hall. That could be interesting if Xavier gets a road win. I don't expect them to. Oh, we got a good one on SEC Network. South Carolina's at Auburn. An 11-point spread for the for the Auburn favorited over South Carolina. This is a real test for the, for the Gamecocks. Um, I mean, if somehow South Carolina wins this game on the road against Auburn, um, they're in the top 10. This pretty much would submit them as a lock as in the tournament. Um, Auburn is, is dangerous at home. Like Auburn doesn't lose at home or Eagle. Um, I don't see him losing this game, but 11 is big for a team that I have ranked. What do I have South Carolina 11th in the country? I have Auburn 14. So pretty much the same. Uh, Neville is just one of the best arenas in the country. I don't expect Auburn to lose, but that's a very good one. 11 versus 13, one of the best games we'll see all week. And, yeah, that's, that's really it for today. So we got one really good game and a couple, I mean, look at the score, check in. Maybe don't you don't have to watch fully, but I would recommend watching that South Carolina game for sure. And then tomorrow, I mean, usually Thursdays are pretty dead. Rutgers, Northwestern at Rutgers, could be a, that could be a big road win for Northwestern if they can get it. Um... Memphis at North Texas, maybe. Memphis, if Memphis gets a real win, we can start having real conversations about them again. And then Washington State plays. Yeah, nothing really else. So, yeah, Tuesdays are usually dead. It's a lot of Pac-12 and just, like, American games. Nothing really too great there. Um, and I got one thing to show you guys before I leave, so I'll be back in. All right, so I made this board. I saw someone on, on Twitter do it, so I made my own. It's going to be backwards, but... um. It's pretty much, I got my, um, it's each top is like lock, safe, right side of the bubble, on the bubble, close, and hanging on. And I do that by each conference here. So I'll be updating this throughout the year. Um, I don't know how I'm going to share it with you guys. Maybe I'll just make it like a community post or something. Or maybe I'll put my Twitter in the description of my ex or whatever, and I'll put it on there. Um, but yeah, I'll be updating this. Um, throughout the year. Right now, locks is tough. Like, obviously, Baylor and ISU are going to make it, but are they locks? The only locks I have are UNC, Kansas, Houston, Purdue, Tennessee, UConn, Marquette, Arizona, but maybe I should throw in ISU and, uh, or Baylor. Um, I got a lot of bubble teams. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, like 17, 18 uh, bubble teams, truly bubble teams. And then we got close. I got Miami, K-State, Iowa, Xavier, St. John's, Oregon, Drake, GCU. Um, and yeah, this is fun. And then the safe ones. So yeah, so I'm going to keep updating this. I don't know. You can't really see it, so there's no point of showing you. I just put it backwards. But I'll be updating this, and then I'll maybe put it on the Twitter or make it a post. 
Um, but yeah, that's all I got for today's episode. I'll put my top twenty five in the description if you want to um if you want to go look at it, see how I update it. I'll do that. And then yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Happy Valentine's Day. Say uh tell your loved ones that you love them and uh peace.